the stairs for launching the boats. It will be easier to cross the river using the bridge. The stones of the steps are damp and slippery. A lot of filth is floating in it. Who could be throwing things in it? It's locked. I don't know who lives there. Hi, what's your name? I won't tell you that. I must not talk to strangers. My mum has forbidden me. So, will you tell me your name if I tell you mine? No, I don't know you. Have you got some sweets? Maybe some chocolate? Would you like some sweets? Sure, that would be great. Are they chocolate? I don't really know. My name is Samuel Gordon. Will you tell me your name too? Well, why not then? I'm Vic. Do you know of anything interesting going on around here? I haven't been in this place in a very long time. Hmm, probably not. Nothing much happens here. This village is terribly boring, you know. I see. Can I go play again? Of course. Watch out for the windows. Yeah, don't worry. Vic, have you ever seen the man in this picture? Let me see. No, I guess I haven't. I would have surely remembered that one. He looks pretty stupid. Why are you looking for him, Samuel? Are you related? You had better watch your mouth. Come on, that was just a joke. It's full of dirty water. Maybe Harry puts it under the gutter when it's raining. It could use emptying. Clean towels from the kitchen, no doubt. Just laundry. The lids are firmly shut. These are certainly still full of beer. The Black Bison, Harry's own production. It's 
empty. Today's menu. Road deer on cream. Wild ball shoulder. Gamekeeper style. Harry's wife always did cook well. Maybe I'll have something later. I'm not hungry yet. KDM Transport Services. It's probably used for carrying beer kegs. Hello. Hello. How long have you been sitting here? A few hours, I guess. Why do you want to know? That's my way of saying hello, I guess. Oh, okay. I've been here for two or three hours. I've got nothing to do today. Why don't you take a chair? No, thank you. Maybe some other time. Tell me, is anything interesting going on in the village? Here? No. In fact, I don't remember anything interesting ever happening around here. In Willow Creek, nothing ever changes. I saw a fisherman on the shore on my way here. Do you know him? Oh, Jim? Of course I know him. He's my uncle from my mother's side. Is he always sitting there, fishing? He appears to have been sitting there the whole day. Yeah, he's the most patient person I've ever known. He spends hours on that pier just sitting. I wouldn't last a single hour, you know. Good morning. Hello, hello, sir. I haven't been here in a long time. What can you tell me about the manor? Well, I'm not sure where to begin, but really, there isn't much in the way of news. Hold on. You seem familiar to me. Haven't we met at the winter feasts? No. I don't think so. But I do know you. See, I'm pretty good with faces. What about last month during the vintage? Is that it? Listen, I... Yeah, yeah, I know. You probably owe me something and aren't comfortable with my having recognized you, right? I owe you nothing, Harry. Did you say Harry? Tom, this young lad here is calling me Harry, but he says he doesn't know me. Don't let him annoy you, sir. He's been trying that on strangers for as long as I remember. I just... Is that a problem with the fact that I want me money back? There wouldn't be any if you weren't making those debts up. Bah! Indeed. You're the right one to say that. Should I show you your last month's bill? Right, right. Calm down. I was just advocating this young fellow here, because he's a stranger and he doesn't know those tricks of yours. Okay, I've had enough. One more word and you're not getting a pint of water on credit. Or, let me tell you what, I'll pour you nothing until you pay off the whole debt. Come on, Harry, don't be a cheapskate. Listen, if you let me finish, I'll tell you who I am. Sounds great. I'm listening. I am Samuel Gordon, the son of Randall Gordon, of Castle Black Mirror. Why didn't you say so right away? 
Well, I tried to, but you wouldn't actually let me speak. Okay, well, that gives things a nice twist. A Gordon is always welcome here. So, what can I get you? Today, we have smoked venison on the menu, along with a good staff beer. No, uh, thanks. Maybe later. I'd like to ask a couple of questions, though. Oh, sure. Harry, what's new in the village? Things happen, but there isn't much news. How should I understand that? Well, I hear a lot of gossip, but nothing worth mentioning. You see, we all know one another here, so nothing's too interesting. Maybe. That's going to change now. Yeah, I'll let you know when it does. Harry, until what time are you open? Well, that depends, but usually late into the night. You see, I don't sleep much, and when I'm not doing something, I'm usually pretty bored. But not many folks show up so late, do they? I usually play cards with Tom here, or I play chess with myself. Oh, you play chess? I'd say I've learned to play well during all those long nights. Let's play together sometime then. Sure! I remember William bringing me here. Yup, so do I. He was a serious poker player, you know. Incredibly lucky with the cards. He would totally clear us out, but then he would return everything. Ah, yeah, he was a nice bloke. That's a real shame he stopped coming here. Hmm. Why? Who knows? We were all on good terms. But the last six months, he didn't show up once. Well, it's a bit of a distance, and at his age. Nah, I wouldn't say that was the reason. William was always a tough old gent. I'll tell you something, though. They say he wouldn't even come out of the castle, and instead locked himself away in the old tower to study some old volumes and stuff. Where did you hear that? Well, I told you. I hear things from time to time. What else have you heard? Nothing. But maybe Mark knows something. He used to help out in the manor garden. Where can I find him? He would normally be here by now, so he's probably not going to turn up today. Never mind. I'll ask him some other time. As if William was hiding something. I have to know more about the last months of his life. It has several small holes in its side. It's not likely used by anyone anymore. It has several small... It's not likely you... Various objects, porcelain statues, gold watches, breast pins. Mostly trinkets. The door is locked. There is a sign that reads, I'll be right back, Murray. But who knows if it hasn't been hanging here for a week already. Old cardboard boxes, damp from the rain. This is probably where Murray throws out what he no longer needs. Davison, William's friend and lawyer, lived here. He moved away a long time before Catherine died. He always said he wouldn't be able to do much around here as a lawyer. He decided to move to Barclay with his family. I have not heard of him since.
the old fish market. I remember when old Mr. Fenton died. There was no one to take care of the fish market. I don't know what is there now, and I'm not interested. Ten minutes to two. The time is not correct. It probably doesn't work at all. I won't leave just yet. Excuse me, may I speak with you? Sure you can, young man. So how is it going today? I'm going to catch a big one today. I hope. If only it will rain. You mean because of the fish? Have you caught anything yet? Not a scale. My luck was much better yesterday. Fish are too smart. They won't go out of water. Well, I'm not surprised. Heh. I had a very nice one on the hook a while ago. But it managed to slip away in the last second. I dragged it in as far as the pier. But then it snapped my line. The biggest and oldest ones are truly cunning. They get tangled in the seaweed at the bottom. And then wait until you snap the line yourself. Why don't you fish further out in the river? My old boat has too many leaks. Besides, I enjoy fishing this way better. How are you? Have you stopped for a talk? I'd like to ask you a question. I need something from the pawn shop on the other side of the river, but it's closed. Yeah, that's possible. Have you any idea when Murray opens the shop? No, I haven't. I don't care what he does. Good luck to you. I have to go now. Thanks. I hope it will start raining soon. Change your mind about the dinner. My Mary makes some wonderful meals. Everyone around here will tell you that. I believe you. I'm just not hungry yet. I would like to ask a couple of questions, though. Okay, feel free. I came upon a closed pawn shop. Is it ever open? Sure. Old Murray would never close the shop without a reason. He probably had to leave. Some business of his own, no doubt. You don't speak well of him. Not many do. Everyone knows he's an old sly boots. The only thing he cares about is cheating people in that old junk shop. But what would you expect from an old cheapskate? What do you want from me? I'd just like to ask about something. All right. How long have you owed Harry money? That's my business, not yours. Or do you want to pay up for me? Should I? Well, I overheard your conversation about old Sir William. Do you know anything that might be interesting to me? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. My memory is Forging up. It's probably the thirst, you know. Oh, I see. 
I know where he's coming from. I'll pay off his debt, and then I'll ask again. What will it be, sir? I'd like to ask about something. Sure, go ahead. Will you change your mind about that debt of Tom's? It's partly my fault, you know. I'd be glad to, but then he wouldn't pay it off next month either. They say he who doesn't pay should not drink. Well, there is some truth to that. I have decided to pay off Tom's debt. But why would you want to do that, Mr. Gordon? I just want to. Could you sum it up? Hmm. Okay, well, as you wish. At 17 pounds. All right. Here. Well, I've no idea what Tom might have promised you, but you better not believe him. That's none of your business. So what is his bill like now? All clear. Good. Oh, it's you again? I have done what you have asked. Now it's your turn. Right, I heard you. I guess you have done me a good turn. So what do you know about William? I'll tell you what I've heard. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm listening. People have said that from time to time, Sir William would go to the vicarage at night. That's all? What's so strange about him going to church? Nothing much, I'd guess, if it hadn't been late after midnight. Oh, that is strange indeed. Just ask the gravedigger or the vicar. They both saw him. But don't mention me if you decide to go see him. They needn't know that I told you anything. Oh, thank you. I need to speak with Mark. You probably know each other. Yeah, we've known each other for years, but he's not here today. Do you know where he works? I would like to go see him. Mark only works when he must. He hasn't got a permanent job. But try old Murray. Or Herman. He does something for both of them from time to time. So, how's it going? All right, I guess. Why don't you take a chair? I'm a little short on time. Uh, some other day, perhaps. Never mind. I'm used to drinking alone. Private house. No one is answering.
I can't leave. I can't. Vic, have you seen Murray today? His shop is closed. Why should I care about his shop? Why? Is there a problem? Well, that old man doesn't like me hanging around that shop of his. Or rather around those glass cases. I've got no idea what his problem is. Hmm. I may have one. Oh. I do remember seeing him leave this morning. Do you have an idea when he will be returning? Judging by how he sharped himself up, he must have gone into town. So he's probably not going to return before tomorrow. Oops! What was that? What's this here? A ball? Vic! I know it was you, and I know you can hear me. Just you wait till I catch you. I'll beat you within an inch of your life. Ah, damn. Now I'll have to clean up all this mess. Hmm. I suspect Vic is not going to show up for a while. Any news, Harry? Nothing special. I'll be back. Whenever, Mr. Gordon. We have said everything. <laughs> The Warm Hill Parish. The main entrance is closed and only opens on Sundays. I've got to use the side entrance. Good afternoon. Have you time for a little talk? I never hurry anywhere, unlike everyone else around here. I'm interested in learning about the parish and this cemetery. I think you're the right man to ask. Maybe. I've been helping Father Frederick for many years now. I know the names on all the graves. What do you want to know? Tell me, how old is this parish? 
No one knows how old exactly, but this cemetery and church are much older than anything in the neighborhood. A long time ago, they used to bury heretics here. They say there's a system of corridors under the cemetery where the souls of the innocent wander looking for a way out. You know, I've seen quite a lot all these years here, but... For instance? Well, it was a long time ago, but some years back I heard something like the voice of a child in the distance. It was moaning and singing verses. At first I thought it was just an illusion, but then I could no longer contain my curiosity and went outside to have a look. I followed the sound of the voice, but the closer I got, the less audible the voice became. Maybe it was just a child playing nearby. Two hours after midnight? I don't think so. Plus, look around. There are graves far and wide. Hmm. But that's past now. I have no idea what it was, and I do not want to know. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. Have you heard the voice again, or anything similar? I've already told you enough. Don't tell anyone about this. I don't want to look like an old fool. You said you have known Father Frederick for many years. What can you tell me about him? Father Frederick is the best man I know. He took me in when I was orphaned, and raised me as his son. For that I will be grateful to him for the rest of my life and I will be around to help him as long as I am able to. But if you want to talk to him, you will have to wait until he returns from the neighboring manor. I see. Thanks. Tell me, what is your name, actually? Mine? No one calls me anything other than Gravedigger. Father Frederick's Gravedigger. And I don't mind if you have questions about it, it's true anyway. And you are a Gordon, right? Yes, Samuel Gordon. So you're the grandson of old Mr. William? Yes. I saw you at the funeral. Of course. Did you know William? No, not personally. I would see him from time to time, though. He used to go inside the church. How often? Not that often, but when he did show up, he was always in a hurry, as if he knew he didn't have much time left. Did he ever speak with you? No, I told you, I did not know him well. But he would speak with Father Frederick, wouldn't he? You will have to ask Father that yourself. I will. Thanks. I've heard that you sometimes saw William come to the vicarage late at night. Is that true? Who told you that? That's not important. So is it true? I don't care to talk about it. I don't want to look for problems. Whatever you tell me will stay just between us. It's not like I think I can trust you, but since you're a Gordon, I'll tell you what I've seen. Everyone who knew old Sir William thought he was a bit of a madman. Please don't get offended. And later, when he refused to see anyone, the gossip began floating about. I'm telling you this so that you know I'm not making up what I'm going to tell you next. Go on. I first saw him here some six months ago. I was sitting in my cabin, about to go to bed. I saw a light. It was someone approaching the church. In the twenty years that I've been working here, no one has ever come here this late. So I went outside to check out what was going on. I saw a figure concealed in a dark coat walking among the graves. He was looking for something, his head down to the ground. Was it William? At that moment, I had no idea who it was. I couldn't see his face in the darkness. He spent some twenty minutes there, going round, mumbling something. What was he saying? Well, I observed him from a distance. It wasn't audible. 
So what happened next? The church door opened, and he made for it right away. I cautiously followed him. Father Frederick was standing in the doorway. It seemed as if he was expecting that person. It was only then I realized it was Sir William because I was close enough to recognize his voice. He and the father had a long conversation then, and Sir William was waving his hands vigorously about during most of it. They finally went inside, and that is all I saw. Do you know anything more? I never stick my nose in other people's business. Thanks for telling me this. I only told you because you're Sir William's grandson. Now leave me alone. I have to finish my work here. Why was William meeting with Father Frederick in the middle of the night? May I have a look inside the church? You have to wait for Father Frederick to return. The church is going to stay locked until then. But you can open it, can't you? It doesn't matter. It's going to stay locked, as Father Frederick ordered. Its branches are stretching over the graves. The names carved in stone are no longer legible. One of the crypts of our family. I don't even know who's buried in it. William will rest in this cold grave forever. I'll find out the whole truth, even if I go through hell for it. The tomb of Jeremy Gordon.
can't leave. The church is locked. The church. May I disturb you? Not for long, I've got a lot of work to do. Has Father Frederick returned yet? No, he hasn't. It's a long journey from Winshire. He won't be back until tomorrow. Tomorrow? I'd like. You'd like to go inside the church, but I already told you about that. Now go. I have to finish this before dusk. It's seven o'clock. I should return to the main gate. If Herman is true to his word, his man will be waiting there for me. You must be Dr. Herman's man, is that right? I'm not Herman's man. I just work for him from time to time. You're Samuel Gordon, aren't you? I've got something to deliver. Yes, please give it to me. Yeah, why not? I don't care who you are anyway. I was supposed to give this package to whoever came to this gate at seven. That's when my job is over. Take it so I can go. Hold on a minute. Are you Mark? Yeah, that's me. Why? Harry said you had worked in our garden. A couple of times. So what? I'd like to ask you about William Gordon. What can you tell me about him? Hmm. Nothing. I barely knew him. I just worked in the garden. I'm in a hurry. Do you want anything else? No, thanks. Good. See you around. Bye. I hope I'll find what I'm looking for. There's only a watch and a few trinkets in it. I'll open it. William made a remark of some kind here. To my forgetful head, the path to the key begins in the library, on my work table, hidden away under the blue curtain of unwritten words.
They'll be full of books or old paper. I won't bother opening them. There's a button under the inkwell. I'll try to press it. There's a box of some sort. I'll take it. There is nothing of interest there anymore. Miniatures of the planets of the solar system, carved from hardwood. That's it. That must be William's key.
The door can't be opened. I left William's key on the other side of the door. The lock must have gotten stuck. The lid won't move. Lots of scrolls and papers, but none with William's writing. He must have been recording the important notes somewhere. As though I've heard that melody somewhere before. The black rook is missing. The lid is locked. The lid is... As though I've heard that man. Several scrolls scribbled over with notes. There isn't anything useful on them. The lid one. Astrological maps. William admired the stars and space. I don't think these can help me, though. Old maps. I'm not interested in them at the moment. The door.
Hmm, this title makes no sense. I'll have a closer look. There's a small key inside the book. The pages have been cropped so as to hide it. I'll take it. It doesn't fit. Hmm, it's cold to the touch. Old maps, a globe, and a sextant. What did William need all this for? As though I've... The lid... Strange to the touch. The lid. The lid. The lid. The lid. As though I... The door... The door...
drain. As though I... I'll try to push the latch open. Success! I need to explore William's study thoroughly. I need to explain. The lid won't move. book has been glued to the bottom side of the drawer. The diary of William Gordon. William's diary. Excellent. Hopefully I'll finally learn what happened that night. March 21st. I'm old. I'm old. I know my time is drawing in, and that is why I want to put some sense into my life before I leave this world. I have contributed my last years. Maybe it is also because of the guilt that I bear in my heart for the fate of my dear James. After all the years spent with the... I must... March 23rd. In the chronicle of the manor and the old records in the library, 
I have learned things that were forgotten, and much that is new. I learned that James is not the only one to have lost full control of his mind. Throughout the centuries, several of my blood ancestors have suffered from the same affliction that now curses James. It seems as though it is all somehow correlated, has a perverse purpose of some kind. I trace the family line. Is the madness supposed to be punishment of a punishment for deeds so horrible that we have not been pardoned? I am terrified by this idea. April 5th. I feel something is not right with me. I am weaker from day to day. My age has caught up with me at last. As the Chronicle foretells, the way to revealing the truth is through five symbolic keys. I don't exactly know what their purpose is, but if they can lead me to the truth, I must obtain them. I have decided to pursue first the ones that have been carried over time far from my manor. Centuries ago, the keys were given to different men of our family for safekeeping, so that they couldn't be used together. Luckily, I still have my own with me, and obtaining James's keys should not be difficult. If only I had known before what I know today, I would not have given it to him. The next one must be in the hands of Marcus himself, according to the records. The fourth one was given to Durgham Gordon, the original owner of the remote manor in Wales. I, I still... When I obtained the other ones, I, April 15th, I have returned from Wales. My... It was... Un, not all hope is lost, however. I will focus on the keys that James and Marcus possess. It should not be... April 20... I cannot change what has happened in the past of my... The curse that has plagued... It must stretch into times as distant as those of Marcus. I have to... I know that the tomb is concealed in the dark underground of the parish. Its entrance has long been lost in forgetfulness. No one knows where to begin to look for it. I will set off for the vicar... April 26th. Whatever it is that is buried underneath Warm Hill, it is not easily within reach. It took me several days before I discovered an extraordinary pedestal with numerous tiny and meticulously shaped stones in the belfry. The whole pedestal is a complex mechanical lock. Surely it will open the way to the church's underground for me. I tried to change the positions of the opposite stones. But it was beyond my will to fully concentrate. I was too tired to attempt to set up the mechanism properly. Before I left for home, I made a drawing of the whole mechanism and returned the stones to their original configuration. Tomorrow I will go to Warm Hill as early as possible. April 27th. Luck was on my side. I opened the way leading to the tomb of Marcus. Surely. I'm the first one in centuries to have succeeded in doing so. How great was my surprise when I descended into the tomb. There was not a trace of Marcus's grave. Nothing. His body must be hidden somewhere. I hope that the answer lies in the four books surrounding the center of the tomb. Shall wisdom be your way? Writes an old text carved in stone. Even after his death, Wisdom protects Marcus as it has in his life. I am almost positive that the first answer is map. Despite the darkness, I tried to write down the text from the books, but it was easier to memorize it. I also found an extraordinary, in all probability, a ceremonial object in the shape of a perfect sphere. When I touched it, it was as though whole long centuries breathed on me. An odd feeling. May 7th. I am afraid of this night. I have not slept for two days now, and I hear voices. Yes, human voices. There are dozens of them. Their whispering is melting my ears into a sea of horrifying noise. What's happening with me? Am I mad too? No, I repudiate that, now that I am so close to the truth. I don't think I can find anything more in here. I'm feeling so strange. 
my head. Sir, you're awake at last. We were starting to worry that something might have happened to you. What happened to you, Samuel? I don't know. All of a sudden, my head started to ache vigorously. I cannot remember anything after that. How did I make it to my room? Base found you lying unconscious in the attic. Yes, I was going to tidy up there when I saw you lying on the floor. I hurried to get Sir Robert, and then we carried you to your bed so that you could have a rest. I told you, Samuel, that you should take a rest after such a long journey. Perhaps you are right. I have no idea what happened. I vaguely remember having a strange dream, but I cannot figure out what it means. Important thing is that you're all right. Yes, that's true. It would be best for you to sleep for a while. This time, I will follow your advice, Robert. Good. We shall leave you alone, then. If it gets worse, come see me. Thank you. Hopefully I will be all right now. Come, Bates. We shall leave Samuel to his rest. Yes, sir. Robert is right. I should take a rest. Tomorrow, I'll find out more than today. Had a terrible dream. In the morning, my thoughts were interrupted by a knock at the door. Sir! Sir! Open up! What's going on, Bates? Open up, sir! I have to tell you something! Hold on, Bates. I'm there in a moment. What's the matter, then? It's horrible, sir. Henry, our gardener. They found him in the garden pond. Calm down, Bates. What are you talking about? They found him dead this morning in the pond. I know what I am saying. I saw his body being dragged out. How did it happen? I have no idea. Detective Collier will tell you that. He has been questioning everyone for quite some time now. And he wants to speak to you, too. He did not give any of us a chance to recover from the shock. Not even Madam. Where will I find him? He's waiting for you in the common room. We had better go there right away, sir. All right. Let's go. Detective Collier. Yes. Samuel Gordon, I presume. I need to speak with you. Mr. Gordon, do you know what happened? Yes. Bates told me everything. Good. I need to ask you a couple of questions. Shall we begin? Yes. Did you speak with Henry Stanton yesterday? Yes. I only arrived yesterday, but I spoke with him during the day. Oh, you arrived yesterday? Yes, to attend William's funeral. I understand. What did you speak with Stanton about? I don't know exactly. It was a very trivial conversation. Had you known him from before? No, I, I only knew Mr. Dickens, who was Henry's predecessor. That was before you left the manor? Yes, about twelve years ago. Okay, let's return to your conversation with Stanton yesterday. Did he seem strange to you? Nervous or disturbed? No, nothing like that. 
he behaved normally. So, you are saying that he seemed normal? Right. I spoke to Morris, your groom, before this interview. He told me that Stanton would often have a bit too much to drink. Yes, I have heard the same. Madame Victoria has also confirmed it. What do you make of it? Well, they found him in the garden pond, tangled up in algae. I don't know yet how he ended up in there, but the most likely explanation is that it was on account of his drunken state. He might have bumped into something, lost his balance, and fallen into the water. Maybe. But don't you think the water would have awakened him? No, exactly the opposite. It was water that caused his death. He fainted, fell into the pond, and the cold water did its thing. Stopped his heart? He wouldn't be the first drunkard to have drowned like this. What's ironic, however, is that it didn't happen in a lake or a river, but in a little bit of water in the back garden. Oh well, no man can choose his death. If there is nothing you need to ask, I won't be keeping you any longer. Thank you. I have all I need for now. Would you please see me out? Certainly. Follow me, detective. I will now wait for Dr. Herman's report and close this case. Thanks for your time, Gordon. You're welcome, detective. Goodbye. Collier wants to close the case. Hmm. Now that Henry is dead, I've got to find a way to obtain the second part of that strange object. 